Thank you. Went down to action item number four, deliberation decision on planning and zoning's commission recommendation of findings of facts to annex mountain bound custom storage RV park. Mr. Mayor? Councilman Stokes. Could we have Mr. Cherry give us a brief uh, summary or synopsis of this project? Mr. Cherry. <laughs> of course, Mayor. So really quick, so the applicant, um, I want to note they were able to make their planning and zoning hearing. However, they are out of town. They're based out of Lake Havasu. They're going to be joining us via Zoom. I'm just going to bring them up. I have them waiting in the room. They've been watching it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure they're super excited. And with us representing the applicant, we have Mr. Ryan Rodney. Is that him too? Hi, Rob. Hey Ryan, how's it going buddy? I'm doing well, how are you? We're doing good, so we're getting some speaker interference. Um, no. So if you just stay on mute, we'll see your face, and we're going to use this for the volume, and I'm going to put this next to the speaker. Okay, let's yeah. see if I can go back into the room. I thought it was, might have been something on my end, which it probably is. No worries Ryan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief synopsis, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Sound good? Sounds great. Alrighty. Mayor, City Council, what you have before you is a annexation and planned unit development application for the mountain bound custom storage and RV park. What is proposed, um, everyone is familiar with the Wilson 46 acre property south of Johnson Brothers, the hotels we have. Um, on that property is being proposed to be built 234 RV parks slash storage pads. Uh, this is a, has some key differences than a traditional RV park. So those are differences I will let the applicant elaborate on. However, I want to speak to some just key major points. Um, along with that, the proposed development is to, ha is to have a convenience store, a laundry mat, a fitness center, a maintenance building, a main office building, community pool, sports courts, ch children's play area, and dog area. Um, they are seeking a PUD, but for the most part, they meet all the general standards that we have. Um, we were looking through, once again, uh, what their key deviations are, and essentially it was signage. Um, our sign code isn't friendly towards this type of development. Um, but regardless, the applicant, they wanted to do a PUD because they understood it was a different type of product and they wanted both the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council to be able to review the request with the utmost discretion. So the items, or the item, which I want to just make sure the details are given straightforward on, which I believe that the conversation will, will end up, sir, which the conversation will end up surrounding is traffic. We know that in February, we saw Loves. They were interested in annexing. Um, they did a traffic impact study. Note that the applicant has done a traffic impact study as well. They have submitted that to ITD for review and they have provided official response. Um, as part of their review, they took into consideration other development which is happening in the area. Um, not to speak in any way on behalf of Johnson Brothers, um, but they have expressed interest of expanding their operations and building another hotel. So, in order to give you the best information possible, that was included in the CIS evaluation that ITD did. So, and the mayor and I, we both had the opportunity to discuss this with ITD. And essentially, um, this is what ITD is calling for right off the bat. They have to build a right in lane into the development. That's what they have to do. What, IT, what ITD is recommending, and I'll clarify more on this, is the applicant will not be able to build more than 150 units until the following happens. Um, they will have to restrict the US-20 and Foothills access. That's the access we have. Um, so we can go to Wingers, KFC, what have you, from US-20. That's going to have to be a right in, right out, and left in, looking at a median. And 
as was discussed with previous developments, the developer and other associated parties will be responsible to provide a connector road east of US 20, which connects Worth Lee Road to the north and Foothills Avenue, mm -hmm. along with a traffic light there. Those improvements cannot be at Foothills Road because it's too close to the interstate. That is the reason for the improvements further north. The ITD, when they were giving their evaluation to city staff, initially they said, well, technically we ran our models. How they got there, I'm not an engineer. They had the stamp. They said maybe 300 before these improvements have to be made. But we understand there's other development happening. And we don't want to give any one, developer, any one developer up there all the keys to the castle. So we would recommend this group having a 150 mark so they can't strong arm other potential developments associated with Johnson Brothers and vice versa. That both of them will be the opportunity to do some build out before there is complete build out. Um, note that Johnson Brothers is a supporter of the project. Um, they came in very early on um, and they were a party when we were here in February, they opposed the annexation um, for what was being proposed with loves. Um, conversations have been good as far as talks of improvements and everyone coming in to help with those associated costs. Um, it's a little bit of everything. We have impact fees for roads um, that can certainly be applied for projects like that if they're named on the CIP. Um, that's important to note. But I believe both parties are at the understanding that to ultimately get what they ultimately want no one's going to have a full build out. We have to come to the table. I can tell you at this time, we don't have an official development agreement between the city and between the parties at large. Um, I, I think it's kind of what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Are those agreements that you seek to enter into before you seek entitlement? I, I, I don't know if that's the best route forward, but I think that's important for this body to know that right now, even though we know that those improvements are needed, we don't have anything formally written or acknowledged um, besides the memo we have from ITD and the applicant giving their base acknowledgement. So with that, I'm going to, um, if, it, if you see fit merit to allow the applicant to do his presentation and then allow the city council to answer or, or have any questions you see fit. Can I ask the council before we get in there? Do you guys have any questions? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Do you guys want to do a presentation? I mean, it's. This know. is awesome. This so, do we, yeah. in the sake of, I'm not trying to rush anything. I just, no. I just want to. Are you I don't need a presentation. Do you need a presentation? No, I don't think I do. I'm good. Okay. Real quick, Mayor. I just want to make sure we're doing it correctly. Does the applicant have any right? Would you like to make a presentation? Did you say anything? <laughs> um, I would just like to thank everybody uh, for the opportunity for us to bring our business, our concept, and our use uh, to the beautiful city of Mountain Home. Uh, we're very excited uh, to get started. We have an appetite to begin construction as soon as possible. Um, I think that there's um, some great opportunity to accommodate um, all of the growth that the city is going through. And I believe that uh, what we'll be bringing is something fresh and exciting. Um, so ultimately, uh, just ready to get started. Uh, we are ready and eager and willing. Yeah, I'm sorry, what was your name again, sir? Ryan. Ryan? Uh, for the record, my name is Ryan Rodney, uh, founder and CEO of Mountain Bound Custom Storage and RV Park. All right, Council, you got any questions for him? Yeah. Councilman Brennan? Uh, I think it's a great product. Uh, a lot of people passing through the area to bring a big benefit. Um, Brock made mention of a development agreement in his uh, opening remarks, and I, I feel that that's uh, very important to begin with. Um, I'll probably make a real controversial statement here that you know, I'd <laughs> like to stand on my own, but um, I just I want to point out that um, well, let's see here. I think uh, I know the, the roadways 
in Mountain Home better than Headquarters Idaho Transportation Department. <laughs> in terms of uh, access, I, I live here every day. I work the streets every day. Um, and, and, and this is my home. And that intersection of US 20 and Foothills Roads is a disaster as it is already. Or sorry, it, it's a disaster already without adding additional um, spaces or businesses up up uh, that road. Um, for I would imagine, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the majority of the vehicles coming in in and out of here might be equivalent in size to an 18 wheeler with a, a full size truck and a giant fifth wheel coming into park. Some some may be smaller, um, but that. I, I don't know how to stress it enough is that I think we need to have immediate secondary ingress and egress whether what uh, to Fort Lee or what's the other name a uh, hot Creek Road yeah. um, so Brock what's your recommendation here for a, if, if we could discuss a development agreement that uh, says you know as they're starting to break ground we how else do we gain that gain a safe, secure place to the highway? Because the more backed up it is, the more crashes we're going to have. And, and it talks about agreements with um, the pilot across the street and cutting off some of their access because of a median in the middle. Uh, and kind of not the elephant in the room, but another piece of this pie is the hotel. So mm -hmm. a hundred and fifty room hotel on top of that that they're considering. So giant big rigs f with uh, hotel traffic daily uh, I'm just uh, not willing to proceed as is uh, without a secondary ingress and egress maybe we talk about a latecomers agreement um, and this the uh, maybe a three-way agreement between the city and mountain bound and the Johnson brothers for hotel building I, that's that's the only way you're gonna get me to proceed I love the project it's it's fantastic here mm -hmm. but the safety and, and the flow of the road has to has to be right up there at the top. Mayor. Councilman Garvey. Uh, I cannot agree with Councilman Brennan more, especially on, <laughs> <laughs> I know this shocks you. Um, on holidays, I know everybody take note of this. Um, on holidays, that, that intersection, that whole area is a disaster. The traffic backs up on the freeway, going east and west um I, I have to agree that i think we need a plan of traffic flow before we add more to the issue so your kitty are we uh still moving all that um swapping land for the the road putting it against the blm ground getting it up to hot creek road that's that's, that's our plan, plan. Mm -hmm. Currently. yeah <laughs> well we have to get this in agreement that's where this is all yeah. coming from yeah Mr. Mayor? Councilman Stokes. I would oh, agree. Wait, wait, sorry. Oh. Are you done? Oh, I'm done. Yes. Okay, oh, sorry. Councilman Stokes. I think this product is good for the location, but I would second and third uh, Councilman Brennan and Councilwoman Garvey's concerns. The thing that's scary for me is, as you read the um, number that ITD put down, that 150, and then I look at their phases, they can basically get to phase four mm -hmm. without doing any real egress or secondary egress, ingress, whatever. Um, can we be more stringent on that number and maybe go down to 49 or one, perhaps? Um, just to make it safe for the citizens. It is already a cluster up there and we don't want any major accidents and we're not talking about small vehicles here. We're talking big trucks carrying heavy RVs and boats and maybe jet skis. I don't know. But you get my concern. Um, ITD put that number in. And uh, frankly, I don't know. I don't think they know shit about our traffic situation. I, I would. Uh, I think Councilman Brennan has a better uh, grasp on it than they do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the support. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, well, it's, or, sorry. Go ahead, Brock. Um, so I believe that, like I said, the the juncture when we go through firm development agreements before someone has the entitlements, um, you know, it's one of those things ideally that they can happen simultaneously. 
in an event like this. Um, I can tell you that just today um, we had a meeting with an individual um, where the property up, we have another piece of property up there that's on contract where the improvements here would also be benefiting towards that property. <coughs> So I think, you know, outside of this entity and also Johnson Brothers, that there's the opportunity to potentially grab other new development that's happening um, to try to create as much of a proportionate share of just what we're able to do. Um, I can tell you tools that this body has um, as far as what we could do in for, forward. Um, we could base the approval on a development agreement that you get one phase. Um, you get 50, you get 80, wh whatever that number is, mm -hmm. um, before we have an approved development agreement of how these requirements or improvement are going to come to fruition. Um, and no, also, right now, we ha we're having active applications with the hotel who doesn't have any zoning entitlements. Mm -hmm. They just need a building permit mm -hmm. to Can I go interrupt forward. Mayor? Council Mugabe. So can I interrupt you really quick? So yeah. what I'm hearing you say is, uh, is that we could put together something possibly before this development gets to any stage past, say, three, whatever. Could we work out something that Mountain Bound Development gets with Johnson Brothers now and starts putting together something? Um, I mean, I know that's kind of taken on Mountain Bound, but... I just think it's really important um, that we have something in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if Johnson's brothers are going to build a hotel, which they've voiced, uh, why wouldn't that be a good starting point? Mm -hmm. So upon annexation, as you know, annexation is the biggest bite of the apple. It would be in an annexation agreement that that was the expectation. Okay. Um, so those are planning tools. I, I can tell you from the economic development side, um, it was my experience with Loves, um, speaking to this property owner, what have you. They need to build something in order to have monies for those improvements. Um, and again, I don't know what that is. Um, I can tell you that's what I've been told. We can ask the applicant about what that means. But if we were to say this whole thing has to be built to both the applicant and potentially Johnson Brothers, before you build any new hotel or what have you, I believe some responses that we could get is, well, how are we supposed to build for those funds for an area which all of us have been there, which is already kind of broken as it is now? Um, how are we supposed to put something forward with nothing there? And again, I, I don't have the magic number. I don't know if it, we allow 50. I don't know if we allow 60. And I just defer to ITD because I'm not a traffic engineer. They have a stamp, they have a code of ethics. Um, when people get hurt, when crashes happen, they are the liable party. They're the approving entity. Um, that's that's all I have for you, unfortunately. I, I've been up here long enough to know that uh, as much as everyone is subject matter expert, I'm not a subject matter expert in, in traffic counts or studies. I, tr I trust the, the, the traffic engineers. Um, we have a phenomenal relationship with ITD, and that's been culminated of work after work after work. Some of the, the, the places that should not have had access, we've been able to grant access, um, whether it's a kidney bean or a right in, right out with uh, uh, ITD. Um, they wouldn't have given their okay. I would have, we, so we've, we've been there where they say no, and it is a no until the, you know, so. And I understand everyone's concern, and maybe, you know, right now what we've done is we've cut a circle up by the Hampton so the truck traffic can come up and around, and I understand everyone's, everyone wants to take a left there. Maybe you make that a right in, right out, right now only, uh, right where the City View, it's not City View Drive, what is it? No, it's further up. What is it? Um, Foothills. Park. Foothills. 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 Foothills Road, you know what I mean? And then they go up and flip around. Um, I'd hate to see this development not go, um, just like the Loves didn't go because of this very same issue. Um, that's just my two cents. I'm not, like I said, and in, in, in all fairness with ITD, they have, they have really worked well with Mount Home. They've given us things that they probably 
was they probably shouldn't have. But having that relationship with them is 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 a good one because obviously their first their first role is to get traffic through it, as fast as possible, right? Second one is what economic development, and they've worked with us really. Is their first safety, safety economic? Safe, yeah. So I just want you guys not to beat them up so hard. Um, they've worked with us. Um, quite considerably and they, they've been good stewards to the city of Mountain Home in, in, in helping us get economic development going. Mr. Mayor? Council Stokes. And the way I read this, it says, no more than 150 RV storage pads shall be constructed without the following improvements. And it goes on to say, subsection US 20 and Foothills Avenue be restricted to a right in, right out, left in intersection. And then within that section, this is where they talk about um, this will require discussion with surrounding business owners. ITD is basically saying you have to, if you want to complete this project, you have to work with um, business owners or, or surrounding property owners. And that's where I'm just not sure that the 150 pads is the right number. For me, I'd like to see them get one or two phases through. That's, that's okay. Um, but so to do three or four would be a little bit much for me. Okay. Sorry, Councilman. Yeah. yeah, okay. So if Johnson Brothers wanted to build a hotel right now and it being zoned the way it is, they could build their 150 yeah, do it. and without, without mm -hmm. anything because it's already zoned in and all that good stuff, right? I would consult with legal, but I don't have a zoning mechanism that I can tie them doing something to. So how we got the 150 is we wanted Johnson Brothers and this applicant to work together. Mm -hmm. they, 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 ITD was going to give them all 250 300. units, or 300, sorry. But we asked the applicant and we asked if we could, we asked ITD, would it be all right to have them work together? And I think that's what we're, we're mm -hmm. trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mayor, I would hate to see this project go down also based on our problems in our city mm -hmm. they're wanting to come to our city so I would say hopefully if the council agrees I, I stick with the 150 um, with diligent work on that um, agreement uh, I'm sorry what'd you call it the, the development agreement yes excuse me yes the development agreement um, to, to fix this problem so that it's not it's not it's not mountain balance problem that we have this issue um, but we do have a problem up there um, Mr. Mayor. go ahead Rich. Mayor council I, I I do know that Johnson Brothers actually is working on it because I have talked with their engineers <laughs> that's working on a road up there so they're working on trying to figure out things it's BLM land it's a lot of runoff that the rain comes off that mm -hmm. so there's a lot of engineering they got to figure out what's going on. So they are working on that. So we have been in discussions of what's going on. So just, just and I want you, councilman and councilwoman, sorry, council, council members, sorry, <laughs> um, know that we do have, we already have it platted. If you if you look at our plat maps, what we're trying to do is literally move it to BLM, and that way they all have frontage, I guess, property, right? Move that to the back end of the the fence, and. Um, go on from there I guess um, it is a plan it just seems like nothing happens overnight and nothing nothing's perfect <laughs> Councilman Brennan <coughs> did we influence ITD's traffic impact study by negotiating with them is that what you're saying no. we asked I said would For you like are you saying like 150 150 versus one getting all mm-hmm okay I would say influence we asked the question and it's up to them. They're, at the end of the day, they're the yeses and noses. You know, they, they tell us what we can and can't do. So that, see the um, the road right there. We're wanting to move it to the BLM side and go right there. And that way, it makes the property values better, not only for everybody, but it. it they, they can utilize the land better to get a mm -hmm. hotel up there and other things. Better fire barrier having that road. Councilman Brennan, I'm at the same same accord. Like I don't I don't want them to like outright get denied. Um, but we are talking annexation, and when after annexation comes outright allowable things that they can do. So we kind of have the keys to the castle right now. But um, as far as 
the phases or the development <coughs> agreement um, <coughs> proceed per, in my mind I proceed forward now but the development agreement has to be sorry proceed forward to a certain extent now but a development agreement has to be signed sealed and delivered up front so that there is a rock solid plan that that the developer knows the city knows Johnson Brothers knows that uh, this is where we stand and there will be no other development until it's done hey Randy Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Sorry. Rodney. I got Rodney. Ran Jesus. <laughs> Just stop calling yes. Ryan, uh, do you understand where, where Councilman Brennan's coming from? Um, I absolutely do. And um, I just want everybody to know that we're fully prepared to uh, pick up the capital cost, share in that cost. We're willing to do whatever needs to be done in order to satisfy uh, the requirements. Um, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from at, at the 150. I, I, I will make a comment and say that the uh, traffic impact analysis was conducted during the Memorial Day week and weekend, uh, which according to our traffic study engineer is one of the busier weekends at that interchange. Um, so I take that for whatever it is. And I know that um, ITD had approximately three months to conduct their review and provide the memo documentation uh, talking about the 150. Um, but I'm willing to meet somewhere in the middle. Um, if, uh, you know, we can find a way to, you know, get 75 to 100 of our RV park buildings erected, uh, that should put plenty of carrots in the bucket uh, to where we can sit down and uh, really start to consider the uh, the connection road um, from Foothills uh, to Hot Creek and then obviously the uh, uh, the widening of Highway 20. So uh, bottom line, if we can just find a way to uh, get on the same page together and, and row this boat in the same direction, I think uh, over the long term, I think it's going to be a very... Uh, uh, profitable relationship and I think it'll work out well um, I just want everybody to know that I'm, I'm willing to you know put in the work and and meet you know somewhere in the middle um, I would if it's anything like the highway improvements that we were required to do uh, with the Arizona Department of Transportation um, that was a pretty significant improvement um, and I was a hundred percent in agreement. Um, I'm big on safety. I'm, you know, big on, uh, you know, proper ingress and egress. Uh, so I get it a hundred percent. Um, that was over a 1 million, $1.5 million project that we picked up. Uh, but before we had to do anything, we were kind of in, you know, the same scenario. We were kind of in between the boat and the dock trying to figure out, you know, how we could meet somewhere in the middle. And they allowed us to do phase one, which was a hundred of the RV park buildings at our riverbound facility. Uh, that's uh, pretty much the agreement that we arrived at with the Department of Transportation. Uh, they understood our position as the developers and um, it worked out well. So if, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, city council members, and staff members, uh, if we can take that into consideration as we move forward uh, to approve the project, um, we'd be uh, very appreciative of any consideration. Mr. Mayor. Council Stokes. Uh, Ryan, um, you said uh, somewhere between 75 and 100. Uh, my thoughts are 99. Um, and I say that because... Well, I, I say that, yeah, because you can get um, phase one and phase two done. Um, allows you to get some development in. And I understand your position as a developer, um, and I believe you understand our position as a council as a whole. Um, so that would be my kind of meet in the middle of that 99 number. I got you. 49. Yeah, that, 49. I think that sounds like a great deal. <laughs> I can go along with that. Yeah. I can go along with phase one and phase two. Um, You bet. Oh, I'm not commenting on substantively how, how this should be done. I'm only mentioning procedurally that, um, borrowing a little bit on what Councilman Brennan said, 
an annexation and once the entitlements are in place, it is now uh, that an annexation slash development agreement, the terms of it have to be understood because that is what the conditions of approval are. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it is routine uh, that whether it's 50 units or 75 units or 99 units or 150 units, that they could build, that they can be built and utilized before the traffic signal is has to be put in place on Chinden Boulevard. You know, things like that. I've seen this a thousand times. That's no problem. However, at time of approval, at findings of fact that uh, Brock's got to draw up and then I draw up, we put the terms. This is where the turn lane is. This is where this is. This is where this is. So that that is what the conditions of approval is. It can't I cannot type something up where it says uh, you could build 149 or 99 units and then you need to get together with your neighbors and try to figure something out. You no longer have jurisdiction. Right. Mm -hmm. You no longer have any more approval periods. There's nothing more that Brock can do to require anything. So whatever it is, I don't mind that they could build um, whatever it is substantively, however the number is, is irrelevant in my mind. It's procedurally the mechanism now is when your conditions of approval come into place. And if your condition of approval is a development agreement or an annexation agreement, it's now that you have to see the terms of it. Now, it strikes me that you, we don't know everything yet. OK. But somehow, there has to be a level of specificity in this, saying, applicant, you, in order to build one lot, you have to agree that at 99 lots or units, the following things have to be constructed. So the following things have to be itemized now. It can't say you need to get together someday down it. And it, it, you provided, there's nothing that is quote unquote required. Uh, and so it's too wishy-washy. Uh, it isn't something that is a substantive requirement as a condition of approval for a planned unit development. Right. So could I? A planned unit development is planned. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Councilwoman Garvey. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is somewhat what was my question earlier. So we could do the approval with the development agreement in place. That was my question earlier. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is we need to just add these little subsections that you can build 99. However, you have to provide an intersection and expansion and installing a connector road, etc. Yeah, if there's and that's an item in our list, motion. That is in your motion saying. I move to approve this PUD with the following conditions. Okay. Um, upon, of, on or before the 99th unit, the following uh, infrastructure improvements must be constructed. Okay. If they don't, uh, you can't hold Johnson Brothers technically if they all they're doing is asking for a okay. building permit. Okay, I'll make a stab at a motion then. Yeah. Mayor? Council Lugari. Are you not ready? Let's, we, well, before our motions, maybe we got we to talk about all the details. Right. Like Do you have the, more questions? The connector road and the intersection, so, okay, the stoplight. Okay, bear with me. Hold on. Bear with me. Okay. And you may change my motion, or you may deny it. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve annexation. Um, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, of the Mountain Bound Custom Storage RV Park with the following conditions. 99 units can be completed. After 99 units, we are asking the developer that requiring. Yeah. Excuse me, requiring. Excuse me. The developer will provide an intersection expansion by installing a connector road east of US 20, connecting Worth Lee Road, Hot Creek Road, and Foothills Avenue to accommodate for the further expansion of his project. Any other additions? Is that Ask the Paul Fitzer smell test? I don't know. I said I'm not commenting on it substantively. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, What's what the council want? I don't know what <laughs> it is needed in there to alleviate the concerns that you have as to what That's is needed my concern. for all the. That alleviates my concern. Yeah. Yeah. In that case, then it's fine. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. Mayor? Councilman Stokes? I would only comment to Councilman Gary that you read the second part. I'd like to see the whole thing within okay, okay. Uh, the requirements. Well, that is already in there. Yeah, she that is that. a requirement already. About so U.S. and 20, yeah, so that that you restricted yeah, right in, right out, left. Changing. Bear with me one second, okay. okay? Just so I don't lose my train of thought. We're changing B, section 16, yep. item B. Yep. We're changing that to 100. 99. Excuse me, 99, 99, I better write that down. Okay. I is already a requirement. Mm -hmm. On 99, I is a requirement. Okay. okay. Do you want me to, I mean, I'll read it all if that will make you second this. <laughs> <laughs> that was all, I wanted the whole thing read though. I'll yeah. second it as it is. Council, because it's already yes. in the, um, just, you don't have to read them all out. Yeah. But if you just, okay, I, like, I got it. Identify it. Okay, I would like to make uh, has specific conditions of approval. Okay. I would like to make a change to my motion to approve the annexation of mountain bound custom storage um, to change it to 99 units at first build out to include I under subsection 16 and II as conditions to this development. Second. Okay. Seconded. Uh, it's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Councilman Brennan. I, I think we need to talk about a latecomers agreement so that they don't have to foot that bill entirely all by themselves. And maybe I'm seeing it wrong, but with, with that motion, they're fully responsible for the entire road um, without being able to ask the hotel to show or any, uh, anybody else that comes in in that space. They were already fully responsible anyway, regardless. If they wanted to do 150, they had to meet II, mm -hmm. and they were okay with that. You see what I'm saying? Could, could we ask that when John Sprouse wants to build their 150, this has already been zoned or annexed. I mean, we can't make them pay for that? And, and, mm -hmm. okay. and, what, you, and what you can create, um, with all good intentions is you could create a scenario where they'll get to the 99th and then they'll just bag it and then they're out they'll tuck and run and get out of it because they can't compel right. uh, the other parties to join in the latecomers agreement now if there's somebody if there's a player that's out out there that it's a city road this is why you do the da's beforehand well this is what i'm saying that that road that's going up there is a city road the city can't mandate Anybody that goes up there that utilizes that road, if we... We could do that independently uh, as well. You can say, subject to a potential latecomers agreement, should any other development wish to do it. So if they're in the middle of it, mm -hmm. uh, then you would have them uh, take part of the burden away from them. But you can't say that their burden is only one-third or one-fourth or one-ninth or two-thirds. Because we don't know who the other players are necessarily. He, they are under full agreement, as he said, that they will do whatever infrastructure is needed to complete the project. They're agreeing to our, right. uh, our what we're requiring as it is without working with anybody else, any potential future development. So I think it's a moot point. How about this? Just add to the very end of your motion, subject to potential latecomers. Do I have to say out of that whole thing again? No. Okay. Just say <laughs> all that ditto subject to latecomers. Okay. Which and then will uh, enable us sometime later down the road for some new application that comes in that they will contribute part of that. Okay. okay my it motion. Gives the, it gives us more freedom. My motion stands except for we are going to add subject to latecomers in the future. Potential. Potential, Potential latecomers in the future. Mine so motion too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good motion, second. Any further discussion? Yes, Councilman Brennan. I, I, I like the direction that we're going. I, I think we're just jumping into it a little too fast um, because, as it's been mentioned, all this is we, we are agreeing to uh, basically cut the pilot off or the language in here is a little hard for me to track, um, but it will require discussion with surrounding business owners. So what discussion has occurred already uh, what discussion could still be had how can how can all parties be in agreement with this so that their business is not getting cut off it's meaningless future discussions blah 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 is meaningless I mean ITD put it in there I get it 
it and if they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. Doesn't mean anything. So aside from the discussions, though, the first part of that paragraph is still in place, right? Yeah. So a median, I mean, a median will be constructed, and the road will be. You won't be able to turn left. Yeah. The mayor is requiring us to you and I to have discussions. Great. Hi. Hi. We're done. <laughs> I mean, it's. It doesn't unless somebody is asking something an entitlement from us, i.e., one of those other parties. Hence the leak. Then it's means whatever that means. But could you put up a map of the a close-up like Google map of this uh, of the intersection of US 20 so pilot and all that? Can you zoom in on that? So the the part where it talks about the the median. Um, so. If you're coming west on US 20 towards the interstate, if I'm reading this correctly, and maybe legal can help me understand it, the median they're saying means if you're coming west down the highway, you cannot turn into like basically the Chevron or Subway or Jack in the Box or the hotel or mountain bound RV. Is that right? That, that'd be my, it, I would be kind of, it's kind of the same thing as what happened when city when uh, Kmart subdivision started to develop and they had to do their left into their property and everything had to be a median Walmart had no say that's that's what happened so that's that's kind of the same thing but am I reading that right yes. everybody coming down out of the mountains will not be able to turn into that entire road they won't be able to turn yep. left into it but they'll be able to turn left at this light right here yeah. and mm -hmm. go through here. In how many years, though? That me when does the median get constructed? At 99 with our motion or immediately? For, for this development, that would have to exist before they build any further. Okay, so immediately a median gets put in, and maybe 10 years down the road, then, then, a, then they have the ability to turn down Hot Creek. <coughs> <Thank you. laughs> We don't know when that road's going to get built or when that intersection's going to get constructed. That, that's not at all part of our motion that says you have three years to build this intersection. He wants to say something so bad. Are you available for public testimony? No, no. no, no. Uh, no. We have it here in, at the very end. We have it at the very end. Um, Mayor? I, I'm just not willing to proceed, to proceed with cutting all these businesses off. You represent the applicant? Oh, okay. Come on down. You need it. Let's see it for him. Yeah. So my name is Ron Ramza. Um, I represent the Wilson Sisters as well as Mountain Bound. Um, I represented uh, Love's Travel Stop. I've been working on selling this property for seven years. So your traffic questions, I've been through it multiple times. The road that um, this gentleman and Brock were talking about going up to the north. Mm -hmm. Hot Creek. Hot Creek. Hot Creek. Thank you. Yeah. Started with Courtney Lewis. Uh, in February, Lowe's got a quote for that road. It's $1.7 million. So to put a relevant number to your discussion of what the applicant is willing to pay to get that feeder road north and south is $1.7 million. So what the regional director of ITB has said is that median would stop somebody from coming off of Foothills Boulevard going west and turning south. It would also prevent somebody coming south down the highway, <coughs> excuse me, turning east onto Foothills Boulevard. So it's going to affect everybody in that. It's going to affect everybody on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's going to force people to go up, up to uh, leeway, do a U-turn, and come back around. So you're taking the problem right here and moving it, it up. right up there. Mm -hmm. So as you said, uh, Councilman, about the, the traffic issues here, this median is just going to move them up further to the north until this road right here is put in. Mm -hmm appreciate the latecomers. It's a great yeah. way to share this 1.7, which who knows what it'll be, with all these parcels are going to benefit from that road because they're all going to have the same access problems with ITD. Mm -hmm. So it's just over seven years, it's been as, as frequently as loves, who is going to start this ball rolling to get this road put in, <coughs> excuse me, and this median put in, it has to start with somebody. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else will join on to it, mm -hmm. but it has to start with somebody. Well, can it start with the city? We build the road, and as the attorney said, 
I can already see the answer to that. <laughs> so the in, in, individual latecomers, when, when we annex or when we give building permits, that's part of the agreement. So so we have a solution now rather than how many years down the road. Is it okay if I sit here? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so here's my thing. And no, no, I think Richard and I are going to probably say the same thing. We could put in the road right now and use our, oh, our chip seal, our old chips, and roll it, and it'd just be like a Smith Road. You know what I mean? We could do that if, if that would make everyone, but we would maybe make that gentleman say, just pay for the labor. We could put in the road. Mayor, I do have a clarification. Looking at this, I don't think that that meeting has to come in until they were at their 150 or like ours was 99. Mm -hmm. So one, if they want to go over, if they want 100, 100 units, they would have to put the meeting in or have everything mm -hmm. taken care of by then. So that, it's, it's up to the... There's no median for the first two phases, if that's what you wanted to say. Good. So Idaho Transportation Department had a similar requirement of loves, that loves could build the travel stop. But until, and the next step was to build a 250,000 square foot distribution facility. The access road had to go in and the median had to go in before they build yeah. the warehouse. They could build the travel stop, but they couldn't build the warehouse. It was a very similar uh, requirement for an ITD. And I believe that's on the record of the application. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor, how fast how fast could the city act and and put that in, subject to our own latecomers agreement? All we need really is to move. We have to get with those property owners, ask if we can move it to the. I guess that'd be the east. Mm -hmm. Street crew could do that all day, every day, huh, Rich? Mayor, <laughs> <laughs> we Mayor. get some engineering done. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 right, this is just a. For right now, we could just, you know. Well, then can't they just drive on a dirt road then? Touche. Uh, anyway, so okay. I, I got, um, I got, hang on a second. I got a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Gray. One last comment. Uh, first of all, we already lost loves due to this issue, which would have been a huge economic impact. Second of all, um, we have an applicant that is already willing and ready to do this road and says that he is ready to take on this road. So I'm not sure why we are so concerned right now. Um, we, we want, we, this, is, this would be a great development and he has stated clearly that he will pay for this road, <coughs> which will help Mountain Home greatly. As far as- Council, Mayor, hang on a second. <laughs> Council. Any further discussion? Uh, Councilman Brennan. <laughs> can, you, can you throw Ryan back up on the screen? I, I guess I just want to hear that again. Ryan, did you did you agree to fund that whole north-south road connecting to Hot Road or Hot Creek? Yes. Okay. At what point? Um, it was originally 150 from ITD, but in light of uh, our meeting today, it sounds like it's 99. So at 99 units, you'll do the full development of the road, but I guess the city has to get the rights to it first, right? We just have to swap land. They would just dedicate it. They'd have to get an easement dedicated to us so it would become ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so No, we already own the ground for that road. We have to get with the property owners to move it to the east. Oh, because we have the right of way already. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So... Okay. okay, there you go. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'm going to call for the question. Councilman Stokes. Aye. Councilman Kane. Aye. Councilman Brennan. Nay. Councilwoman Garvey. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Run down to action item number five deliberation decision on planning and zoning. Commission recommendation, findings of facts of zone I-1, light industrial PUD entitled Mountain Bound Custom Storage and RV Park. Council, Woman Garvey? I don't have anything on it. Council Stokes? Mr. Mayor? Council Stokes? It appears to be um, right next to I-1, which is light industrial. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Councilman Stokes. I make a motion to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation and findings of fact to zone 
uh, I won PUD entitled Mountain Down Custom Storage in RV Park. Second. It's been motioned and seconded. I'll call, or any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. Councilwoman Garvey? Aye. Councilman McCain? Aye. Councilman Brennan? Nay, at this time. Uh, <clears throat> Councilman Stokes? Aye. All right. Went down to action item number six, deliberation decision on planning and zoning's commission recommendation and findings of facts for preliminary and plat request by Jennifer Love Day. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Stokes. So Mr. Chair, give us a quick synopsis, and um, if the applicant is here, we might want to hear from um, So, this. Bye, Ryan. Have a great night. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to listen to our meeting anymore. Probably doesn't. <laughs> so, 